Hey, what's up guys? Kenny Lamons here with Medicare Millennials. Today I wanted to drop a quick video on you guys about agent burnout and whether you really need to work 70, 80 plus hours a week during AEP or otherwise to be successful in the senior market insurance business. And I'm going to answer that for you um, because I hear way too often this time of year about guys bragging about how they work just insane hours from morning till till all through all hours of the night seven days a week and look this is a little bit of an opinionated video so take it with a grain of salt and i take nothing away from those grinders out there that actually enjoy and prefer to put that many hours and that much time in however i'm going to share with you guys my philosophy on how this business is more a marathon not a sprint and it is absolutely not necessary to put in that those type of hours to be successful in senior market or particularly the medicare business so guys this channel you know is all about us chronicling our journey to building a large successful medicare book of business i always want to be really real with you guys and just give you sometimes i'm just giving you the straight cold hard facts about what we do and sometimes i want to give you my opinion or our philosophy on the way we do things so let's jump right into it <clears throat> if you're in any of the big facebook groups or you just talk to other agents in the industry, you'll just see a lot of posts and a lot of chatter about agents wanting to pull their hair out and they're so stressed out. And I'll see posts about people, you know, they didn't get done working until 1030 last night and they're back at it at 6 a.m. This is seven days a week. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, that the whole reason I got into this business was so that I could find a rewarding career, both rewarding both emotionally and financially, that still allowed me to do the things that I truly loved outside of work, like spend time with my family, or go on trips and vacations, or I like to hunt, go hunting, attend sporting events, whatever it is you like to do, what's the point in putting in that many hours all the time, always grinding if you're not gonna enjoy life along the way? So let me just give you guys a, a, a quick analogy and then I'll give you some tangible, realistic uh, things that I do to make sure that I'm not burning myself out or putting, putting business too far ahead of life. Um, so one analogy, I was thinking about this the other day, you know, I've been running the past few months since COVID started really trying to get in a little bit better shape, just to feel better. I've got young kids, I wanna make sure that I stay healthy. So I just kind of thought to myself, man, am I really doing enough? Am I working out hard enough to lose the weight? And then I just, after a few months had gone by, I looked back on it and I'd realized, you know what? I was really consistent. Five days a week or more, I was running two to three miles or sometimes more than that, two to four miles per day. And so while, while that might not be breaking any records, I may not be running a marathon at any one given time, at least not at this point, the, the, the way that I was able to see the results that I wanted to see over these past few months was pretty simple. It was be consistent. And what's more effective, guys, running 15 miles in one day twice a month or running two to four miles per day, you know, four or five days a week consistently? You're going to build really good habits. You're going to be fresher and avoid injuries and avoid just that raw burnout from, from going way too hard, way too long, and then not wanting to even look at running or doing whatever it is you're doing again, right? And so to me, it's just a, it's kind of an analogy, whether it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. You know, if you want to build a bunch of muscle that you, you can't just lift a million pounds for five minutes straight, that's not going to give you the same results as you know, doing a, a consistent long-term workout program. You're, in fact, if you do the, the first thing I suggested, you know, lifting a ton of weights all at one time, thinking you're going to get big, you're really just going to get hurt. And you're not going to be able to lift weights anymore. So I don't want to ramble on too much about that. I hope I made <clears throat> my point. So let's talk about some real things. Probably lost a bunch of you guys on my ramble there that, that I do in my business to make sure that I'm consistent. So number one, I purchase my leads weekly. And the reason I do that is even if I'm going to be out of town or something, I always want to know that week in and week out, I'm never having to backtrack and try to buy a bunch of leads to make up for lost time or make up for a, like a, a, you know, if you had to take some time off work and you need to make up your monthly goal or your monthly income. If you have a consistent, steady lead flow, you don't need a hundred leads a week. You don't need 200 leads a week, especially if you're not, if you're a one man shop, I'm not talking to a call center owner or something like that. 
So I just encourage you guys to whoever you work with, I hope that they have a plan to help you buy a high intent, consistent lead that you can get in front of week in and week out without having to try to call 150 leads once a month or whenever, whenever you can afford to do a lead drop. Um, another thing that I do with my customers is I set the precedence when I first sell them a, a product that I'm their agent, I'm here for them. However, as you can imagine, Betty, they keep me so busy, especially this time of year. And so I'm helping a lot of other people just like I'm helping you. So I just ask that you give you have patience and you understand that you will need to leave a voicemail or send me a text message and I'll get back with you just as soon as I can. And it took me a long time to learn. You never want to ignore your clients. But if you're once you build up a clientele, if you're answering every single call at all hours of the day and night at their beck and call, then you're going to find yourself overwhelmed and frustrated. So that's another tangible thing you can do. Set the right expectations. Let them know. They can always leave a voicemail or text you. And of course, you'll get back to them. But to please be patient. I recommend that you guys do avoid burnout and avoid neglecting your family or your personal life that you just put a, a um, you know, a little bit of restrictions on your working hours. So, you know, during certain times of the year, maybe certain nights of the week, you may allow yourself to work a little bit later or take that extra phone call in the evening. Generally speaking, I think it makes sense to put, you know, after 530, you know, I'm not taking any more phone calls. I'm not calling any more leads. I planned ahead. I made sure I had my appointment set by midday. And I made sure that I addressed any issues I had with my clients or pending business during the day, scheduled ahead. So at 5.30, when I sit down for dinner with my family, I'm not taking any more phone calls. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not the strictest about this. Like, if I can slip out for five minutes and handle something so I don't have to the next day, I do it. I'll work out outside of the 8 to 5 time frame. But I do have just general rules and I'm realistic with myself about not doing it too often and... Um, just put your, treat it almost like an eight to five job. You know, sometimes you got to work overtime, but generally speaking, if you worked 90 hours of overtime every single week, for most people, that extra money would, would, would not outweigh the burnout or the stress or the time away from the things that they love. So if you are somebody that likes get 90 hours of overtime a week, go for it. But for those of you who don't love that, don't worry, you actually will may find yourself more successful than somebody else that burns out because they didn't have a consistent plan. This video was a little all over the place, but I think this time of year during AP, it was super important. Um, just want to let you guys know we should be having another workshop coming up for agents that are interested in learning our Medicare system. I'll probably drop that um, in the next week or two and give you guys some dates and some details. Keep uh, reaching out to us on our web, through our website or at info at patriotretirementgroup.com and leaving comments for any video suggestions below. Thanks, guys.